Tuesday, June 17th. Um, the, uh, in place of a uh, really scheduled meeting that would have been held Tuesday, we were unable to get a quorum because of people out, town, out of town and that sort of thing. Uh, so we want to uh, welcome our guests and as well as KJIW and the Illinois Home Day in the World and any other um, any other uh, guests that we might have tonight. So we're going to march right into it. Uh, Ms. Ramsey called roll. Uh, forward. Here. Etherly. Franklin. Present. Crockett. St. Columbia. Here. Davis. Here. Have four present, two absent. Uh, so we're going to move to our guests and their items. So we're going to start with the event permit for the 2021 King Biscuit Blues Festival uh, to be presented by Mr. Jack Daniels. A copy of the permit is in your packet. Mr. Daniels, I saw you earlier um, on here, and so you are, there you are, you're recognized. Thank you all very much, and thank you for uh, making time to recognize the King Biscuit Festival as we prepare for our 2021 event. Um, as you know, it's been a little while since we've been able to produce the, uh, the King Biscuit Music Festival, and um, we're looking to have a really big year, to be honest. Uh, some of our leading ticket sales are starting to become um, very exciting. So we are um, seeking a permit to uh, have closures pretty much match uh, what has been done over the past few years, specifically uh, with some of the accommodations that we've created for some of the um, residents or businesses that exist within the festival grounds. Um, and, and some of the specific individuals that we discussed with some of y'all might have remembered from the 2019 meeting. We've worked with agreements to ensure that um, people, I have some accommodations. Excuse me. Never fails that the doorbell rings when you're on a Zoom call. Um, <clears throat> but we, um, we, we've worked to provide accommodations and allow um, appropriate egress and what is needed for um, for those people to conduct the businesses, their business uh, as best we can during the event. Excuse me. That said, um, uh, most of the things, what we did in the permit process and the attachment, the permit is kind of detail a little bit of things, including the setup activities, the days of closure, where the barricades will be, um, and then some key festival information. In addition to that, um, as many of you guys know, we've had we've had some changes to ensure that we can maximize our handicap accessibility, and that has become a forefront of our desire to ensure that the festival is accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to come. And uh, furthermore, um, we are adding in our 400 and 500 blocks uh, opportunity for nonprofits and other church-based organizations to have an area for presentation. Uh, and there's a special permitting process for that, uh, but that would give um, folks who are interested in doing so a voice and opportunity to participate in the festival uh, and, and, and be a part of what, uh, what makes this, uh, this great event happen. Are there questions about the permit or the festival in general or any information that I can address? So we'll open it up to questions. Yes, I have one. Go ahead. Uh, have you reached uh, out to Mrs. Boyd? Uh, I noticed last week uh, things got a chance to get with her and to see uh, about the issues that she have or that will they be resolved and not like it was last year that some members of this body had to go down there and to say, hey, this is blocked off, that is blocked off. So I, I would be at this point, uh, Mr. St. Columbia probably would make a motion, but I would not entertain that until you all have sat down with her to 
to have a conversation with her about you know, her property and it's a, another couple as well. I, I feel like that, you know, I understand you got you all have everything done, but uh, in good faith, last year we voted and we still had some issues. So I, me personally, I would like to see y'all talk with Ms. Boyd, reach out to her and, you know, and, it, and so, so she can be accommodated as well because we always accommodate the blues that's but we want the people in the Helena uh, Helena and West Helena to be able to make money and to do well as the Blues Fest as well because when the, when the people are gone, we still have uh, the people in Helena who you know want to make sure they can make their small business grow. So when they come back again, that they still can grow even further. So that with that being said, I, I, I that's how I feel about that. Yes, sir. Well, so, so you know, um, to reply directly to that, we. We have, we have reached out to Ms. Boyd. We have not heard back from her. Um, we have created a specific agreement, uh, both with the other couple uh, that you had mentioned, which is the McNeary family. They have signed an agreement with the uh, King Biscuit Blues Festival. Essentially, the agreement is, is if for any reason, the King Biscuit uh, Festival, any, any kind of activity that the festival blocks their egress, um, we have uh, created a system, basically a protocol, and that's listed, I believe, in the attachment with the McNeary. It's, it's very matched to the Boyd Agreement uh, that details what should happen. So the first first thing to, to not put too fine a point on it, but essentially it's uh, there is an hour and a half for us to correct. Maybe it's a semi in the way or a, a, a vehicle or something got misplaced. So an hour and a half for the festival to correct that. If the festival doesn't correct that, we, um, in our agreement, we are on the hook for the entirety of their uh, rental subscription. And that is listed in detail on what the cost is and the daily uh, amount to be compensated for any reason that we are to block um, both the Boyd location and the McNeary location. And for, for, for those also interested, we, we would entertain that discussion with any other member, um, but our, our goal is to, allow um, citizens who have property in there to, to maintain their level of commerce. Um, but we, we have reached out, the communication, the document hasn't been signed, but it is not, um, not from lack of effort. Other questions from member of the, members of the council? Forward curiosity. Um, it, it says here that uh, property owners may not lease the sidewalk in front of their properties uh, to outside business. How do you monitor that? How do you how do you uh, check that? Well, um, you know, we we have a few volunteers and a few staff people whose role it is to kind of focus around the vendor operations. Uh, they we have a list of who is permitted. Um, we also uh, they're also members of the Helena community, so they kind of know what businesses would be operating and what those businesses would have. And really this is just to provide, um, provide an opportunity for us to control what's happening uh, within our event site. And not that we need immediate control of every and all operations going on in the event site, but uh, we're trying to make it fair. And fairness is a big part of things. So if you wanna come down and sell merchandise, um, we are welcome to provide space for that. But what we're trying to avoid is, is individuals setting up something in front of their space that has nothing to do with their business. For example, if you sell shirts and shoes and you set up a, a, a business selling burritos um, or, you, or someone contracts your space from outside, that, uh, that, that comes without, that removes the uh, intention, the good faith of, of what we want to do and, and allowing uh, people to participate uh, and it also undercuts what we're trying to do as a festival as far as keeping things within the community and revenue circling back through Helena, West Helena. Uh, okay. Uh, and so then it must be associated with the business because I've seen businesses before selling um, popcorn, whatever, in front of their business. They own the space there, but they're selling items that are not associated with. Uh, and from what you're saying, that it needs to be associated with the business. If I sell shoes, then I need to be selling flip flops or something like that, something associated with shoes in front of my business. Yeah, or, or even, we can. Even with my occupational license. Excuse me. Yes, I'm sorry. What was that? 
I said, even with an occupational license that I've already paid to the city. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and really all it takes is an additional permitting process through through us. It's really to to allow uh, the fairness aspect because we are we are having to control both the safety and security and the egress that goes on within those city streets. Uh, that 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 does become a challenge for us in trying to maintain that control and, and what happens. It also provides us with with a, a level playing field. Um, so I mean, I think I think popcorn is one thing, but but bringing in outside vendors really it has to do with outside vendors and communication. We are more than happy to have any kind of communication with any business going on because we know there's a lot of activity. We're talking of between twenty to thirty thousand people coming to downtown Helena to spend money uh, to have a good time, and we want them to do so. But we also have to maintain security. We have to maintain a little bit of control of the streets. And we also have to allow a level playing field for everyone doing business down there during the festival. Thank you for your response. Thank you. Other questions? Mr. Mayor. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, say again. I have a question for him. Okay. My Go question ahead. is this. I don't, do you think it's, if a business want to sell shirts or whatever they want to sell, how is this a festival to control what a person sells if they already paid a permit into the city for what, for whatever they're going to do? So I, do you think that's fair that, that these people have to live here and they decide to sell balloons, candy, or whatever they can? You, you, you have, you're in front of their business and they can't sell what they want to sell. How that's good faith. If I decide that, okay, we're gonna have 20,000 people here and I can sell sugar cookies or donuts and I got a, a distillery or whatever I may have, I can't sell, but just what, I can't sell whatever I wanna sell to make some extra money. We're not saying you can't sell. What, what, we're, what we're saying is we're, we're trying to limit outside activity. So, but, but by the leasing, we mean that you can't bring somebody in to sell those items. Um, we also have to control that through health department. If it's food sales, um, we have to be sure that anyone who, who is receiving food within our festival grounds is doing so in a safe manner. Um, everyone who is signed up through our permitting process goes through the health department. They also are paying taxes. So that's revenue to the city. Um, but we, it's the same reason you can't just drive down the middle of the street. There's a safety, there's an egress issue um, at, for this particular time. Uh, and, and we're not saying you can't, we're just saying that we need to communicate and have a permit within the festival so that there's an understanding of what's going on from an activity standpoint. Okay, so can, can, we, can we agree that you would all, you would, the same good faith you asking them to show that you always show the same good faith to the, the vendors. As you asking them to do one thing, can you make sure that you all are, are following the same protocol that you want the vendors to follow? I think without question. I think one of the reasons that, that this festival will continue to work well within this community is a dialogue and to have, um, to have a flexibility within our rules, again, allowing church and other organizations to come in, uh, allowing egress for businesses, especially people who have lots that want parking. Um, I know that that has been an issue in the past and that's one of the reasons that I'm, I'm, I'm with the festival is to accommodate these things. Um, but, but secondarily, we're not trying to stop people from having business and conducting commerce. We just wanna make sure that it's a leveling playing field. If we're gonna have folks come in from all over and vendors come in from all over, they don't wanna to have to be undercut by, um, by, by any kind of activity. So we, we wanna make sure that, that everyone's doing the same thing, following the same rules. And, and I think that creates an opportunity for, um, for but, but very directly, we want to communicate and we want to make sure that if someone comes to us and says, hey, we wanna do this at our site, we, we are not so rigid as to, as to not work with a, work with that, that individual, that group, that business. We very much want 
uh, the the people, especially the folks on Cherry Street and and on Walnut Street, to feel good about the festival. And, and at the end of the day, everybody walks away from 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 the weekend weekend really week long October event with some money in their pocket and some revenue to the city through taxes and fees. And my last, right, I can agree. And my Go last one for you in twenty nineteen. How much revenue? How much revenue did you all make, and how much did the city get from that? You know that is not a number I have off the top of my head. I'm more than happy to provide that. Um, it's not. That's not something we. Every year is different, especially after a COVID year. Um, but we 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 really are 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 providing the revenue stream through the fees and, and the, the site location fees and of course the closer you get to the zero block of cherry street the uh, fees increase um it also depends on the width and size of your booth but um you know the majority of revenue really is through for the city specifically is is through tax collection and uh and and that's that's on on how the revenue streams is taken care of through sales tax and we would expect and it is a part of our um, vendor application whether it's for food including the two percent hamburger tax or for vendors and in, in ensuring that they know that it is on them to to ensure compliance now i as someone who does festivals around i would very much recommend that the city is having someone from the revenue department uh, communicating with these vendors and ensuring that there is compliance because I, I I do know that you know King Biscuit goes through audits to ensure that there's tax compliance both city county state federal uh, but we we want to make sure that um, that and I think it's it is very standard practice for cities to and states to have revenue officials out there working with the vendors ensuring there's compliance and do you all have I know you said with security so who would y'all would y'all be using our local police as security? I see the uh, downtown Cherry has these sky cams. Would you also be using the city sky cams as well to help control um, a police presence and protection for, for the people from out of town? So that that's another issue um, that the, you, you you all are welcome to rent if you get the mayor to get you a contract or something together. If you want to use these sky cams we have as well as so the one you all have down on the pole. To make sure that we could at least still have police presence in the community as well so as down there at the festival have you all spoken with the mayor about how you all can work on uh, donating some money uh if y'all can use one of the portable portable sky cams we should have three by the time the festival is here but have you all decided to rent one or at least pay half in, in case the city decides to want to get another one it'll be something good that the king biscuit would all the years that they've been here I, I don't see anything that says the King Biscuit donated this to the city of Helena. Uh, I wish that the, the King Biscuit would start doing something. I know that you said we get some revenue, but I, it would be nice to have something that the King Biscuit has given to the city to say, hey, we appreciate the city for allowing us to have the King Biscuit Festival. Uh, whether, whether it's a sky camp, whether it's something to say, hey, that we're, we're, we're wanting to see our city do better each year with police protection or whatever, even funding a cop. You know, I know that I know that we have post COVID, but even we could try to see how can the festival help the city. The city is helping the festival a whole lot, but how can the fe festival help the city after the festival is over with? That's some of my concerns. I would like to see something, you know, you, when you all go, you know, it's over with, but I think we a bench or something to show the city, that, hey, we appreciate you or something. And that's just something that I think that people should start doing when, when, they, when they come to the city with a festival or something, give, show the city, hey, we appreciate you. Because with the sky cams, the city's paying for those, but the portable ones, not the ones you all have down there already. But if y'all can use those, we got to pay for security or whatever. I think that the festival should at least try to find a way to to donate something back to the city. Yes, sir. And, and, and you know, in many ways, I agree. I, I will say what the festival does for the city is it brings 20,000 to 30,000 people to downtown Helena for almost a week. And, and I think that 
in itself for many small municipalities um, it, it is quite a gift. Um, that said, uh, from a security and standpoint, uh, security standpoint, we hire both the city uh, police officers and we hire the the county deputies. The city police usually work on a contracted basis under the security guise of, of both myself and our security director uh, to, to work as security officers. Now, they are not the only security officers. We have almost three dozen security officers that are privately contracted to private security that help us with the access points. So that allows our police who are contracted again through, uh, through an agreement and paid for by the King Biscuit Festival to work the streets and be more hands-on versus just being stuck in one spot, one position, not being able to go. And then, and we meet very frequently with the chief uh, who has signed off on this permit. Uh, we, we agree uh, that there are, um, there's a lot of opportunities to, uh, <laughs> with, with a lot of other festivals, how, how security things have gone on, you just, to, the, the barricades and the, the security aspect is, 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 is almost the majority of my concern. We have an emergency action plan that is close to 40 pages that kind of highlights, and, and, and we're more than welcome to share that. That's not something we like to share publicly because it talks about what our security is and therefore could be created as, oh, it could be found, you could find weaknesses in it. But within our security professionals, we use a security action plan that that highlights both the use of private security, as I mentioned, city, the, um, the sheriff de department works for our overnight security. And then we also work with the state police. Um, but from a security standpoint, uh, we do contract. Um, I, I hadn't been approached by the chief to pay for the use of the cameras. Um, I, I certainly understand that that is something that that is a great feature that you guys now have. Uh, I, I will bring that up with the chief and, and I'm happy to supplement that. But as far as um, from, from an overall standpoint, we, we really believe that, that we are driving the tourism for the fall, the, the tourism dollar that's coming in for the fall for the King Biscuit Festival. And, and that from, from a gift standpoint, um, that is, that is what we try very hard to provide a safe, secure environment that people can come down and enjoy themselves and not worry about cars rushing by to know that there is a, a visible and an invisible cordon of security that allows fun to happen for all people of Helena and the guests of Helena as well. And lastly, um, I know you said something about uh, the, the the fest was in um, October. Uh, how how would you all, uh, with, the, with the number of people that you say are coming, how because see when the fest was over, what, that could put us in a in a spike in cases with coronavirus. There's a variance out now. What do you all? How would you all say? What what um, actions are you all to put in place to help keep the numbers of of the COVID? rising. So when the festival is over with, what if we have a spike in cases? What are you all going to do with the social distancing? How are you all are going to work with that? When uh, we have a variance out now and the numbers in this community are on the rise. And when the festival is over with, we got people coming from different places. So we would have to, we would have to try to make sure our people are vaccinated and all these other things. What is the festival got in place to make sure that somebody come in with a fever? What if somebody is asymptomatic and don't know they have it? and spread this around to our community. The gift that you all be giving us is more COVID cases. So we need to, we need to look at that because um, we, we, ha we, we had our share of cases and uh, down the rise in Phillips County, but what does the King Biscuit have in place for that? Tem are, you, are, are you going to check temperatures? Are you going to make sure people have a, something on saying that they've been, they've been vaccinated where they have a, a, a wristband on say, I've, 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 I've I've had my COVID, both both uh, one and two, or if they had the Johnson and Johnson, I had my one dose. What I don't want this community to win the festivals over with any festivals over with, and we have a high number of cases, and we have a, a lot of elderly people live here. I just want to know what is the plan for that 
and then I, I'm done. That's the only question I have, and I hope uh, that you can answer that because when when the fest is over, a couple of days after, maybe a week after, then we'll start seeing. What if we start seeing new cases? So people coming in from different parts of the world to here, right? You all have people from Australia, uh, Africa, all over the world coming to this festival, right? That's right. So my question is this. Do you do you all kind of think it's a little too early since the variant and the variance is out right now, and we don't know what people are gonna bring into Helena, West Helena, and we can have a huge outbreak. That's one of the concerns that I have. I'm not trying to put a, a damper on your parade. I just want to make sure that oh, the citizens put me here for a reason. I want to make sure I answer all the questions, and I don't want to leave nothing on, on, on the table. I want to make sure that everything is. I'll be off the table. When everything on the table that we should be concerned about this variant. In, the, in this community. So um, having just done a large event up here in Memphis, I know how tricky it can be to uh, establish a COVID uh, protocol. And one of the reasons we don't and haven't listed in this permit the specifics of our COVID protocol is because COVID from an event standpoint has become a moving target. And I wanna be clear on what that means is, is the CDC, and then the, the officials in, in both state and county health departments uh, have, have changed rules. As we kind of know, there's a different protocol that comes out uh, every, every few weeks. And with the rise or the potential rise in COVID um, spreading or, or a new variant, so to speak, we, we will follow, first of all, at the most minimum, the CDC and the state guidelines. So the state and the CDC say we got to mask up. We are going to put people in place that ensure everybody's masking up. And if those are the, if that is the law of the land, we will follow the, the law of the land. But uh, we will we will maintain what that that protocol is at the minimum. Now, the the the, the other side of things um, from a planning standpoint, regardless of what CDC says or, or 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 the governor says, we will have extra hand washing stations. We will redesign our how we lay out our porta potties so that there is social distancing in the lines to the porta potties um, there will be hand washing stations available we also will 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 press on our food vendors to ensure that they are following safe protocols and ensuring that that if there's still a need for social distancing which i very much believe there will be in in what four months time um yeah i, I think that 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 this is the forefront you, security and safety isn't just you know people with badges it, it, it now in the, in the covid age it, from an event standpoint the last thing we want to do is, is create an environment for covid to run rampant and and i i very much appreciate your concern and you should know that as, as one of the safety and security officials for king biscuit it is the top of our mind and my mind uh so we 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 will go above and beyond just what 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 is asked of us to to provide environment of safety and safety. Now, there is another side to that 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 we cannot control the behavior of our patrons. We can put up rules. We can we can have enforcement opportunities and and people in an enforcement position. But um, if people don't want to follow the rules, all we can do is ask them to leave. Um, and we don't always, because it's an open and most of the festival is free to anybody in the public, it creates a very tricky situation. And to be honest with you, the way that I see that is that it's signage, it's communication, uh, all of which you'll see it's a communication advance to our ticket holders as we get very close to the event and understand exactly what during that time bracket. So, you know, what the law of the land is, I guess the, the recommendations of CDC during that late September, early October time um, that, and, and that's again, because it's a moving target, it's very difficult for us to simply just say, this is what we're going to do because we might need to do five more things than currently we're doing. I mean, we all kind of remember what it was like last year um, leading into the fall where everyone thought, hey, it's kind of over. And then we had the reoccurrence. So we don't want to nail ourselves down just yet but I do want to be absolutely sure with everyone that not only will we be following the guidelines of the, of the land, but we'll, we will be above and beyond to make sure that we uh, are not in any kind of spreader or any kind of 
putting our, our patrons in jeopardy, both at, at the site or days beyond. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call the question and see if there's a motion to approve the, the uh, permit this time for the Blues Festival in 2021. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, Columbia. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Jack Daniels for making his presentation tonight. I think he's done an outstanding job. And I just happen to know for a fact uh, what he's talking about. That uh, King Biscuit has been here a long time. It has protected our community and has made millions, millions of, brought in millions of dollars uh, to the local uh, people and uh, has provided jobs and security for everybody that participates in it. And I commend you, Mr. Daniels, on the job you and King Biscuit have done to present your program. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, uh, proposal that he has presented tonight to the 35th King Biscuit Blues Festival to be held October 6th through the 9th in the year of 2021. I make that motion that we accept uh, this proposal. Thank you, Mr. St. Columbia. Mr. St. Columbia moves that we adopt the event permit uh, for the King Biscuit Blues Festival in 2021. Is there a second? We have a second for Mr. St. Columbia's So, uh, unless somebody's on mute, I'll let it. All right, it sounds like we, we don't have a second. Uh, so the motion bounced for lack of a second. Mr. Daniels, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for, um, uh, thank you for all you do and for all the festival does uh, for our community. And we, uh, we will try to get uh, some answers to some of the questions, I guess, and come back and try again. So thank you very much, Mr. Daniels. Have a good evening. Thank you all very much for your time. Very much appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Um, okay, so we're moving on down. We, we have a lot of items on our agenda tonight. Um, so we're gonna move on to, I, I wanna be here because I don't, I have a lot of phone numbers and not necessarily names. So it's kind of hard for me to tell um, everyone who is on the Zoom call, but uh, Williams was scheduled to, who owns the Delta Dirt Distillery and who might be working right now because I think they're open on Thursdays. Um, but he was originally going to address the council about his, his power and the importance of reactivating the Historic District Commission. Um, I want to make sure, Mr. Williams, are you on? I don't think he is, but I just don't want to, just in case. Mr. Williams, are you on? Okay, if, uh, if you are and you're just muted or something, then interrupt me later, but um, he, he did show up. Uh, I think twice uh, to, uh, to present. And like I said, I know, I believe they're open uh, tonight. So, um, and I'm sure it's going to be a busy weekend for him. So he might not be able to, uh, to make it. But I will uh, kind of merge this into the next item, uh, unless Mr. Williams interrupts me. Uh, yeah, he was going to address the council uh, about his desire, along with several others, to reactivate the historic district commission, which is something that uh, several people approached me about. Um, and of course, Delta Dirt Distillery, is, if you don't already know and you're listening, is, is one of our um, most exciting and new um, businesses on Cherry Streets received literally international attention, um, as well as national statewide attention. And I would say has probably exceeded expectations. Um, I think that would importantly, I think they would say that. Um, so it's been a really exciting development. Um, but no man is an island, and he, he would like to see, would like to see the 
Historic District Commission um, reinvigorated. What does that mean? Uh, it, it means that the people make in the Historic District of Helena uh, are able to, are eligible for tax credits for those investments. Um, in order for that to continue, of course, we, we had a year uh, of COVID where almost nobody met, um, including the uh, Helen District, uh, Historic District Commission. But it had already been somewhat inactive, um, or I guess had lost momentum. So in order to maintain that tax credit designation, you have to have an active historic uh, district uh, commission. The way that works, it's established uh, that the tax credits are state, but the commission is city, appointed by the mayor, confirmed by the city, by the council, city council. Um, so what I did was go down the list of existing commissioners and I spoke with each one of them. Um, and some of them had te technically rolled off as far as their appointments go. Uh, but the law says until someone has been uh, replaced, they continue to serve. So technically they were still serving it because they hadn't been replaced. But uh, I spoke to every member of the commission, asked them about their willingness to serve, uh, told them about the uh, re renewed interest in, um, in the commission and, and asked them their opinions on it. The result of that is the letter um, our memorandum, I'm sorry, that looks like this. And these are the individuals. Uh, Sandra Lee is going to stay. She wants to stay on the commission, and she's excited about it being reinvigorated uh, as well. The other commissioners also uh, told me that they would voluntarily uh, step aside for these new commissioners. Uh, they were, in turn, excited to see that it was being reinvigorated. Um, the only condition uh, Smith uh, asked me was to make sure they all receive training and, uh, and what that means to, to have a district commission. And so I agreed to that, and I think that's a good idea. And all of them uh, on this agree. So having said that, it's in your packet, and I would ask for any questions and ultimately uh, ask for the city council to confirm those appointments. So Mayor, right now, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Comment, question, I don't know how to, but I, I did not know that you were seeking uh, replacement. And I have some names that I'd like for you to approach, uh, I think would be good uh, uh, candidates, even though, you know, uh, I didn't know that <laughs> we uh, uh, we're nominating and I just got the thing that we were voting on. But Naomi Cottoms would be a, a great person, Tri-County Rural Health Network Director. Faye Duncan Daniel, who's a retired executive hotel management from Los Angeles, Nevada, who relocated back here and she's a community advocate. Um, judge Kathleen Bale, retired circuit judge. Uh, Cynthia Edwards, former director of the Delta Cultural Center, and Betty and Walter Darnell, who are retired educator. One is retired educator and the other uh, administrative behavioral health specialist. Those are some people I would like for you to, uh, um, you know, to talk with or whatever to, uh, you know, to approach them regarding this historic district. Most of them have lived here all of their lives. Right. And I think they're all good names. I have spoken with Ms. Collins about it. Um, I, the second person on your list, I, I didn't speak with. Um, and I know the rest. Uh, pretty well. Um, and I agree, they're all outstanding individuals and, and would be uh, autonomous is pretty busy. She's chairing the um, uh, equity task force and extremely productive and successful one. I mean, she's, she's got her hands full, but, um, but yeah, they're all outstanding individuals. The difference is that uh, these individuals um, are people who who reached out to uh, to us, and the probably the most important thing about them is they've all made investments in in, in the historic district already, um, 
and I think, you know, in the case of Mr. Williams, for example, you know, he's a young man. His family has already done uh, a lot, and uh, we want to encourage that, and we've lost a lot of momentum in this issue. I think all the people you mentioned, I know them all, and they're all stellar individuals, and I would love to see them on city commissions, absolutely. Um, but these are the individuals who have a specific investment in the historic district and a, and a specific interest. And uh, not that so, they wouldn't so all be the good. I think, they would all, I think they would all be excellent on any number of city commissions, actually. So I think they're, they're, they're excellent suggestions. Would the investment um, but these be are the individuals who, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Would the investment be Go someone ahead. who lives in a district or you have to have a business in the district? Or not? Is, is you only that, have to live in the city. You only have to live in the city limits, as far as uh, what I read. Yeah, most of these people but, live in the Beach Street Historic District. Um, I'm not sure how many of the people we we are discussing actually live there, but they. I, I'm not sure. I have to look again. I'm not sure any of them. Well, maybe one. Now that I think about it, one probably does, or maybe two. But a bigger issue is that they've actually invested uh, money in the district and they're active with that. They have a self-interest in saying the historic district thrive. And we've had a, we've had people, we've had good people on the historic district commission. Um, we are the people they replace are all good people. Um, but it needs a new sense of energy on that subject. And these folks, um, and we also have lost a lot of momentum and time on the on it anyway, even if you didn't consider the um, COVID situation. And with the Easter storm and what's happened to Cherry Street in particular, the time is of the essence here. Uh, it's not something that um, you know. It's it's not it's not an emergency. But it's pretty close because we're we're not too far away from losing that historic district designation, and if we lose it, we lose the tax credits to go with it, and so we lose the incentive to invest in it. And um, so I would urge you to. I mean, we have individuals who who have invested, have expressed an interest, um, do want to reinvigorate this commission. I would say we're very fortunate that we have these individuals who have come forward and they don't have a particular agenda um, except to see the historic district thrive. Um, so you know, I, would, I would ask you to confirm the appointments. Uh, they're uh, they're all, good individuals folks. They're all good folks. All, all of these individuals live in the historic district and they own homes here. Yes, ma'am. For the body, uh, Ms. Ford, I agree with you. Uh, I think that there are uh, people who in this community who, who want to see uh, the historic district uh, brought back. Uh, I would like to also add to your list, Marvy Askew, who owns a business downtown Helena. If we're going to, this is to the body, if we're going to, if we're going to do this, I am, you know, I'm in favor of opening the door for anybody who wants to come in, but I don't think that that people who are, if if if, if people who want to be on the district, open it up to everybody so everybody can have the same equal opportunity. Like Ms. Forrest said, uh, Betty Darnell, Be Betty and Walter Darnell, we have good people here who know the district better than some of these people who are being who are asked to serve. I would like to see more people added to the list so that we can have a, uh, to give everybody the same equal opportunity. Because if you limit uh, down, the people who own downtown Bar and Grill have been here just as well. So it's Mr. Stoner who just opened up a law practice downtown. Well, so the people who own the distillery, these people have uh, renovated uh, two buildings to turn one into a half salon, to turn one into a restaurant. I think everybody, that has tried to, with a small business downtown Helena to keep their doors open should be on the list. Some of these people that were on the list that when you went to talk to them about being on the list, they didn't know who you were and you didn't know who they were. So I, I'm with Ms. Ford on that. 
uh, mayor, I mean, the body, if, if, if the head of this, this uh, if the mayor wants to present his list, we can vote it up or down. I'm fine with that. But I would like to see more names added. I would like to see more people reached out, even if the council has to re reach out to some people as well. But if, if, if the head of this, which is the mayor, if he wants to get his list voted up or down, I will, I will certainly help him do that. And I'm most likely down, but, but that's what he wants to do. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor, Joe St. Columbia. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, of course, I, I, I noticed the names on the list and all these people are uh, highly, highly reputable people uh, and own businesses downtown. Uh, I, I noticed one name is not on the list. I was surprised not to see it. And that's Mr. Chuck Davis, who lives uh, downtown in the upper building that he owns. He has spent over a million dollars of his personal money in downtown Helena. He purchased the uh, Daily World and has done a remarkable job as the owner of the Daily World, keeping uh, us in a newspaper. It's people like him and these people that you list here, uh, Mr. Thomas Williams, who has invested uh, into Delta Dirt Distillery, I'm sure a million dollars at least in that facility down there. Uh, these are the people that have such a great amount of money in the downtown area. They need to be on there. And these other people, like uh, Ms. Evergene said, and uh, uh, I think uh, these other people certainly should be considered and we might want to open that commission uh, with more names, more people. Uh, I think the more you have, the uh, uh, more opportunities you have and more interest you have in developing it. But I think they should have a stake or a dog in the fight, uh, so to speak, uh, and have some money in this thing too. If uh, you're going to be downtown, you'd certainly want to see your business grow along with everybody else someone coming from outside with an interest in downtown, that's great. But uh, I think that uh, they would need to uh, put some money, put some money into it as well, such as Mr. Davis and Mr. Williams. Uh, Matt Inman has remodeled a building down there and lives down there. Uh, these names are great. And I think many more would even make it even greater. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And the historic district shouldn't just, uh, uh, and cap, uh, you know, encompass the uh, downtown area alone. There are more areas that uh, comprise the historic district. And uh, you should add more diversity. Uh, and not just you uh, uh, have to be a business owner. Yes, you should have some type of stake uh, in there, but you can live in, uh, here and be invested in your community and want to serve your community. That's what I'm, 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 I'm adding also. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Well, I would I would ask you to um, to either vote it up or down. And the reason is just really simple. I've been here two and a half years, um, and these folks have reached out because they want to add their energy and vital to this. They all have invested. Um, maybe all but one, but the other person has certainly been part of a lot of investments in downtown Helena. The, this is not something that's strictly uh, a, a, a city issue. The tax credits are state tax credits, and it's guided by state law. I'm certainly open to add more people to it, um, but you have to understand, we had people before, and they, could, they rarely got a corner. So it's not about just who, who I mean, good names. There are a lot of good people that all of whom mentioned it to me, not one. These people all did. And they have an energy and a vitality to make it work. And this is a state, state tax credit. You just can't add anything you want uh, to this district. Um, it's, it's all governed by state law. Our job is to have an active energetic um, commission. My job is to appoint those people to the commission. Your job is to decide whether or not to confirm those appointments. Tonight, I'm asking you, uh, we 
to confirm these appointments so they can get about the business of downtown. If, uh, if I find out we can or any of us find out that we can add people to the commission, I'm more than open to that. All the people that were named are all people that, that I would love to see. Uh, and some of them already are actually uh, involved in civic affairs. We need that kind of energy. That's what we need. We have not had an active Main Street. We've not had an active chamber. We've not until recently had an AMP director. Um, we've lost a lot of momentum and we have a lot to make up for. So while I want to make everybody happy, I'm a politician, uh, at the end of the day, what it's about is getting the work done. And these people want to do the work and they don't get paid for it. They don't get paid. They don't, we have a commission that gets paid every month and they haven't met in months. These folks don't get paid. They made a financial investment in a stake here and in Cherry Street, in uh, downtown Helena, in the historic district, they want to make work. We're very we're very close to losing that historic district status. Um, so I would definitely recommend that we act quickly. And that's I what move, I would say. I move the table this issue to the second meeting in July. Mr. Franklin moves that we table this. It's a preferred motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Davis seconds the motion. Uh, any discussion about the motion? Uh, Mayor, can you, can you, is it possible for you to, uh, in between next time, find out if it's possible to add other people to this commission and also uh, ask some of these people that uh, have been suggested? Um, sure, I can do that. But remember, I've also got to, you know, find out and make sure they want to be on it, that they have an interest in serving on it and do this work. I know they're all capable of doing it. And I know they're all good citizens and stellar. I mean, everybody, I think I know everybody's been couldn't agree more. Uh, but the fact is we've had an inactive commission uh, even before the pandemic, and we need an active commission or we're going to lose it. And when we lose it, we're going to lose the tax credits. So it's, uh, it's important business. Uh, our, I would argue that Cherry Street is along with the river. Uh, certainly the two most iconic things about our community that tell people who we are. And we've taken some pretty big hits uh, with that Easter storm, not to mention just the lack of energy and motivation and um, all the rest. From all the reasons I just said, we, we, we uh, but at any rate, so we're very fortunate we have people who want to do this. Very fortunate. And I don't think we should discourage it, but I, I have no problem asking, trying to find out if we can add to the commission or asking any of these individuals if they're interested in serving on it to answer your question. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't see why we can't approve these people that you have and look into the future of possibly adding others, but I don't think we need to drag this along many other things that we drag around. I think we need to go ahead and do this because there's going to be a lot of money lost to this community if we do not maintain a historic district in the downtown area of Helena, Arkansas. A lot of money is going to be lost to our population, to our people, and uh, it'll affect tourism. And I don't think kicking this can around is gonna help. Now, I think we need to support the ones you put on and ask that you uh, look into the possibility of adding others. I would be opposed to putting this off uh, until two weeks from now, but we need to move forward with this community and just dragging things around from meeting to meeting is not my protocol. And that's what I have to say. And I'll vote against uh, uh, dragging it around. Mr. St. Columbia, I'm so glad that you Don't said address that. Me, Mr. Franklin. Well, Mr. I'm going to address you anyway. Please. I'm so glad that you said that because when it's important issues that come up before this body, you either get off the line just like you did when a couple of people wanted 
We voted for some raises. You voted no for one and yes for the other. If it came to the city getting anything done that's not in favor of people that you like, is what it is. And that Look, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you all night, Mr. Franklin. Well, Run me down and try to criticize me. Now, you can rattle your mouth. Let me, uh, let, let me, let me, let me intervene don't here. Don't break my name. Say, let you let me, address let me the council. Here. You address say, the council. Or you address the mayor. Sure. Don't address me. Or you're going to have a fight on your hands with me. And I don't think you want that, Mr. Franklin. I don't think you want that. Let me, Ms. Franklin, if you'll suspend momentarily. Um, so to, to address actually what was said, um, there's, uh, if, if we can expand this commission, then I'll support that and I'll no. open up, uh, open up to other, I'm, I'm speaking, Mr. Franklin, I'll open up more positions, uh, that y'all think would be advisable, um, to, and also reach out to the people mentioned, uh, all of them and any, anybody that you want to meet here and ask them about their interest in serving on it. Uh, in the uh, next meeting, I have no problem with that, but I do think we should go ahead and confirm those who have shown an interest. But you have my commitment. If we can expand it, I'll support expanding it, and I'll also reach out to those people that you've mentioned to see if they have an interest in serving on it, and I also encourage them to reach out to you. Let let you know um, between now and then, and in the next uh, meeting that we have um, who is interested in it and, and also uh, between now and then uh, to the extent that we can legally expand it, I'll support that you have my word on that. But I do think we need to get this ball rolling. Uh, I, I would like to say that there's a motion on the floor and I think that Yes, sir, Mr. Franklin, I know that and you're not and you're out of order. We're in discussion and questions. And so I was responding to what Mr. St. Columbia said about moving forward and changing it later. And I basically just said I'll support that. Any other questions or comments about the motion to table? I have a procedural um, Mr. issue or, or, or question. Uh, one would be as it relates to uh, replacement of, of uh, commission members. I'll assume because I has I haven't read the uh, the ordinance that this is one that gets an appointment. Some of some of them come from within, and then some come by appointment from from uh, the mayor or some of somebody else. I'll assume you've already reviewed that, and you can confirm that you do the appointment of replacements yeah. on the historic district. We, we did. We did, and we looked at the terms of of, uh, yeah. of one of them. So it's it's mayor appointed, city council confirmed. Okay, the, the second issue is, um, since it's not reflected in the handout, are all the terms equal length? I mean, they appear to be three-year terms. Are all of them three-year three -year terms? I think so, but they're staggered um, right. so that they come up with different terms. It, well, the reason why I say it is, as I look at the, at the handout, some of the... Um, some of the terms would not have expired at this point. And if they haven't expired, uh, we had a situation where this came up some years ago. And I guess I've, I've been here long enough to see these things happen where we assume that somebody doesn't want to serve anymore. And we had an actual attempted vote to, to replace a member of a board or commission. And, and the person showed up at the next meeting and said, I never quit. And so I, I, my preference has been since that time, which has been about 10 years ago, if there's somebody whose term hasn't expired, they should either resign uh, or if there is some process by which the board or commission has the power to remove them, that they take, take up that action. But I don't think that we have the power to replace people who haven't quit if they've been appointed. And so, um, uh, and I'm not saying that that would be the attempt of the body to do that, but we should at least for housekeeping purposes, have those people say, I no longer intend to serve. Well, I, I did, I mean, I, I agree with you. And that's why I contacted each one of them and talked to them about it. But they've all, they've all stepped, the ones all but set one uh, stepped aside to make room for these new appointments. So they've voluntarily stepped aside. And one reason is because it's been inactive for, for so long. 
Um, and they were excited that there were new people who wanted to, to activate it. So, um, but I spoke, I called each, each member, spoke with uh, many of them, uh, for, I mean, all of them, many of them for a long period of time. Uh, and just listen to their, you know, their ideas and, and all this stuff. But, but they each uh, voluntarily stepped down to make room for these appointments, except for one. And, and, she's, and, she's, and she's continued, she's, she's not been replaced. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not disputing whether they intend to resign, but I just think as a matter of practice, they should maybe write a letter saying I, I'm resigning my position. Because if you sit in the I, council, I can chair, ask them to write. I can ask them to write a letter, but they have all voluntarily well, resigned. That's I the understand. reason I called them was to ask them if they wanted to continue to serve, or would they rather, or would they consider stepping down for someone else to take their place? And uh, I mean, it, it, and they all did. So uh, I mean, we can definitely get that in writing, but they've all. And if they don't do it in writing, then we won't replace them. I'll agree to that. Uh, but I'm not too concerned if they will do it. I was, I've spoken with all of them pretty in depth about it. It's an important issue for our city. Um, and uh, and I, had, I had good conversations with, with each one. And if they don't put it in writing, then, then we won't replace them. But they have all, they've all agreed to do that. The ones who are stepping down, the ones that are the positions are being reappointed. Mayor, may I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Is it not true that if we do not have a historic district commission in place, that the property owner, whether they're absentee or here, can tear down their building? and put up whatever kind of building they want and the city has no leverage to stop them. So we will lose our historic uh, buildings and our atmosphere. Well, that's absolutely true. Um, that's one of the points of having an historic district. And the other one is you have to have an active historic district commission to enforce those standards. And we haven't had an active one in two and a half years, we had one meeting in two and a half years, so where it might be two at the most, but no more than that. Um, and you have to have an active one. And I think because of COVID, everybody got a little bit of a break, um, but now all those things are, are coming back. And um, we there are many other issues on top of that that require you to maintain in order to keep historic district status so that you keep tax credits. Um, and absolutely, that's true. One, one, of the, um, one of the most important, and the reason the state wants you to have a district a historic district commission is get tax credits, then they want you to adhere to this historic district standards. So in order to do that, you need a local board. And if you don't have a local board, you can't enforce those standards. If you can't enforce those standards, they don't want you to be able to have a tax credit. It's really simple and very basic. I don't think that was a concern whether we should have a historic district or not, or a commission. I agree. The thing I is about the appointees and uh, the diversity uh, uh, and, and reaching out to some other people. That was the concern, I believe, that was here tonight. And, and I, I, I mean, I think it is a diverse commission. One was, but as far as expanding it, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm all for that. If we can do it, uh, then I'm for that. I'm on record right now supporting it. Um, and I'm also supportive of all the individuals that were mentioned. Um, I don't have an objection to any of them as long as they want to serve. You know, it's a volunteer position. I agree with Ms. Ford. I mean, it's not that I don't want the uh, hell in the historic district commission. It, I mean, that was never the issue. We were just right. clarity, and it's okay to ask questions. So I don't know where that yeah, came from. Absolutely. And, and have opinions. Yes. Sure. I didn't mean that you didn't want the commission. I just wanted the public to understand the importance of the commission in its whole, whoever's on it, ensure that we do have a historic atmosphere downtown. And that if 
you know, in some cities they've lost their historic commission and the buildings have been torn down and metal buildings put up. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with the appointments or anything. Oh, no, that's not how I understood it. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, so um, any other questions or comments? Uh, just, I mean, just as, as a matter of clarity, for anybody who didn't understand or misunderstood or whatever, we have a historic district commission. We have one. We have one and it has members that have not been replaced and, and they haven't met. We've just come through a year of COVID. Uh, they haven't met and perhaps some people don't want to serve anymore and need to be replaced uh, or whatever, but, but we have a historic district commission. And so all of the, uh, uh, you know, I guess the uh, perceived panic over the need to replace people immediately is not, it's not warranted. We have one. Perhaps we have some people who don't want to continue to serve. And I think taking a few days or, or, or whatever is necessary to make sure we're all on the same page and make sure all housekeeping is done to ensure that people who are currently serving act, don't want to serve anymore is absolutely uh, the right way to handle this. Because like I said, I've seen it before where people showed up and said, I didn't mean to quit or I didn't want to quit. I never said I wanted to quit. And so I think all of these things are necessary and should be done, but we have a historic district commission. And we shouldn't lead people to believe anything other than that, whether intentional or unintentional. Uh, we have one, and perhaps we have some new people who might be better to serve on the commission, might make it better, might have some new, fresh ideas. And I think anytime you can get some new energy involved, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, but it's something that's worth talking about moving forward. But we do have a commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to go ahead and call a question at this point. The motion on the floor is to table the appointments to the Historic District Commission. There was a second. Uh, Ms. Uh, Rames Caldwell. Uh, Etherly? Yes. Franklin? Forward? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes. Davis? Yes. Mr. Franklin? Yes. I have uh, five yes and one absent. Okay. So the motion to table the appointments to the district commission has been tabled. The next item on the agenda is a salary adjustment. Ms. Turner, you're uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to come before the council to ask for a salary adjustment to uh, $60,000. Uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone on the council that are here uh, remember that 2017, I've been uh, requesting to have my salary adjusted to uh, $60,000. Uh, in 2018, you guys uh, moved me halfway there. You got me to 45,000 and you said you would try to get me the rest of the way the following year. But uh, we had a going concern. Uh, I think in 2018, the mayor came in in 2019, tried to clear the going concern. Uh, we got back on our feet in 2020. And so uh, recently uh, in the past few weeks, we've been able to, to give raise employees. And so I'd I, I like to ask for a salary adjustment to $60,000. And I, I'd also like to uh, remind the council that um, I'm, I'm more than just the city treasurer. I'm also the city's finance director. I actually perform uh, all of the accounting for the city. A lot of other cities that have an elected treasurer also have a finance director. And so uh, I'm basically acting in that capacity for the city of Helena, West Helena. Uh, in that capacity, I, I ensure the compliance with uh, Arkansas Municipal Accounting Law. Uh, I prepare and, and administer the city's budget, annual budget, which is not any type of requirement by uh, any type of legal requirement for me to do so. I just do so because I think it's more efficient for me to do it. Uh, I do the revenue forecasting and maintain the general ledger. And so basically I'm performing the city's accounting, the city's finance and the city's treasury functions. And uh, I, I, I think it's good to have a, a treasurer. Uh, as you know, the, the, the elected position does not require you to have any type of accounting finance background. 
And so I think it's very beneficial to the city that you have a, uh, someone in place now that's experienced and competent as well. And so I'd like you to take those uh, things into consideration and uh, I ask for you to uh, adjust my salary to $60,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna open that up for discussion. Any questions? Is there a motion? We have a lot of people on mute, so is there a motion on the question? Okay. Not hearing a motion, we'll move on. Um, Mr. Turner, we'll take that under advisement. And if anybody has any questions, um, we'll uh, entertain those between now and the next meeting. And then okay. give, you, give people a chance to do that. Thank, thank you very much. So we're gonna move on. Uh, actually, we're gonna move past the Juneteenth Proclamation. President Biden uh, today uh, signed a uh, act with Congress to make Juneteenth now a national holiday. Um, we, I originally proclaimed a holiday as I did last year. Um, the uh, city employees will be off and uh, enjoying the, uh, this new holiday. It is now a new national holiday. And I think that's exciting. When we first put this on the agenda, that wasn't the case. I don't think it had even been brought up in Congress yet. Um, so I think that's a great development. But we can move on because now it is a national holiday. It's not so relevant for us. Um, so we're going to move on to approval of invoice for repairs to the dozer at the landfill. Copied invoices in the packet. Um, the cost of a new undercarriage uh, is $32,763. Um, now, I don't know if, uh, any, if Mr. Jones uh, is on the call tonight to take any questions about that. I'll wait and see if he is. So uh, no, I can't tell, honestly. Um, so what I'll, uh, we've had you know, several meetings uh, called. Uh, what, what I would do is say the uh, labor was taken out of the estimate. Um, and they, uh, in talking to him, they, uh, if you'll see under item four on that invoice, it says uh, labor zero. So they take out. The dozer in question has 2,000 approximately hours on it. Um, I spoke with, um, it, it is parts, some parts of it is under warranty uh, that we don't have to pay for, but most of the undercarriage is not under warranty after after that many hours. Um, essentially, you know, uh, it, it has to be replaced. That's the, that's the cost and y'all have to approve it. I will just say this, um, we're trying to close cell four by July the 15th um, to uh, Philip Fields, he's our civil engineer on the landfill. He submits our report on the landfill closure. In order to get the money that, um, comes to the city uh, or is available to the city upon closure of that cell, we have to close it and we have to submit that report. Because of the rains this spring, uh, you know, it affects everything. It includes, it affected the landfill. Um, it's gonna take everything uh, that we have to make that deadline. So I did ask Mr. Fields to also go out there and, and look at this and, and give me his opinion as well. And everybody involved with it agrees that, uh, that we have to do that in order to make this deadline. And then John Deere graciously agreed to remove the labor costs uh, to, in order to lessen the uh, cost of it. So that's, that's my report on it. Unless there's somebody else on the call, I don't see who wants to add to that. So if not, I'll take questions.
Okay. To approve the uh, invoice to repair the undercarriage of the dozer at the landfill. You wanting us, Mr. Mayor? Do I understand you wanting us to approve the, uh, the purchase of the new undercarriage? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. The dozer is down because the undercarriage. Um, I hope y'all can hear me. My internet's a little unstable, but the undercarriage is damaged. The dozer's down. We need it working in order to make that deadline. Uh, and so in order to pay that, it's over Okay. And it requires a motion and it's like a simple motion and it's like. As far as you know, that's the only cost associated with the repair. Yes, ma'am. I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor, to, uh, to uh, pay the invoice uh, for the repair of the dozer. Same news that we make some motion that we approve the invoice for the repair of the dozer and the amount of the invoice attached in the packet, which I'm going to restate um, $32,763.75. And that is, uh, again, they removed the labor cost and some modern so we we got it down pretty, pretty close to the bone. Anyway, is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Mr. Etherly seconds the motion. Uh, any discussion or, or questions about the motion? Yes, from me. Um, there was some previous discussion about this and perhaps some concerns. I do not recall what those were. And so I wanted to uh, uh, rehash that. If well, I think, and uh, uh, I'm certainly can be um, corrected if my memory is inaccurate, but I believe the questions were pretty much mostly about the um, items that would be under warranty or not. And the warranty service uh, is based on the hours. It, it's received in a lot of use. Um, and, and so the part they're approving is not under warranty, but they did agree to remove the labor costs, um, which I thought was generous. I hope that answers your question. I mean, unless, unless somebody else had some, some different concern, it, 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 uh, Any other questions or comments? If not, if not, call the road. St. Columbia. Yes. Franklin. Davis. Yes. Ford. Yes. Etherly. Yes. Franklin. I have four yes and two absent. Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, the next item on the agenda is the ordinance number 16. Um, and uh, Ms. Ramsey can help me explain this, but basically, if you'll recall, you approve a purchase of the asphalt hot box. Um, it has been purchased and it has been received and it's sitting out there at the uh, street department now. The, uh, the, to get our records correct, the original motion was for $26,055.75. The actual cost turned out to be $31,627.75. And the reason for the difference is that an attachment was added. Um, that originally wasn't included in the initial invoice. Um, and when it was delivered, it was included. Um, um, so the question is, um, 
I'm sorry, the question on the table is whether to approve the uh, actual cost, the 31 627.75. So I'll open that for questions or comments. The attachment was taken off and then it was put back on. I'm sorry, say that one more time. The price for the attachment was taken off when we passed yes, it and now it's been put back on, right? Is that correct? Um, it's been essentially, added. yes. Uh, yes, it's essentially correct. It was delivered it, with the attachment. Is it needed? Uh, and I, Mr. Jones, I don't know if you're on here, but uh, Mr. Jones says it is it is needed and recommends approval. Just yes, I'm here. Time. I'm here. Okay. Would you want to, would you you want to address that question? Uh, what was the question? I, I couldn't hear a while ago. About the attachment, what is it? Why did we did include it in the original motion? Uh, what, what what was this about? Like I said, the hot box, the asphalt box. Oh, okay, is that about the truck pulling it? Uh, no, it's about the attachment. When we when we approved the original motion. Uh, for the original price, it did not include that attachment. And then when it was delivered, it had the attachment with it, and we wanted to keep it. Oh, uh, yes, sir. So, was, but but they have to approve the additional cost. Oh, okay. That was for the sealer machine, right? Right. Yes, sir. So, anyway. I'm we, sorry, Miss Everett. Go ahead. Uh, what was your question, Miss Ford? My question was in the beginning when we approved it for the original amount, uh, that part was not a, a part of the approval. Uh, I think uh, we said that it wasn't needed or whatever. So what what made you change your mind and say that it, it's no, needed? We, we, we didn't say we didn't need the silver machine. We didn't say that. I think what it was, they left the price off. But when Mr. Valley and myself are, are mentioning it to you, we did say that's one of the things the mayor discussed with y'all high was seal the leaks. So, I mean, it, it was on there uh, and, and the price supposed to have been added into that. And somehow, I guess when they build the city back later, they end up put, uh, putting that price on. But we and did, I, a, I mean, we did ask for the ceiling. Okay, I, I, I recall that I asked about the prices that were presented. There were three prices and I was wondering why did we go with the lowest? And I think your response and it's probably on record that uh, it was because they put some, there was something on there that we didn't need. Now we- No, need it wasn't a filler machine. Just, I, just I, don't don't know, I, don't, I don't know what it was, but there were three prices. Uh, there was a price that, that was presented to uh, us on the invoice, which was more. Yes, but we, we, we uh, approved a price that was less because there was something on there that wasn't uh, uh that we didn't need. Well, yes, ma'am. They wanted to charge us for a two rack. I think that was okay. eight hundred some dollars. We didn't need that a two rack when we can put the tools on back of a truck. Then they, I think they wanted to charge us for a lift for the cylinder for the cylinder machine, and we refused that. We didn't need that. So, I mean, it wasn't that heavy that we had to have a crank to lift the machine up and put it on back of that asphalt box tray. So those were the things that we did uh, tell uh, KMG that we didn't need. You are right about, about the price and, and the things that we did. I mean, when, when we, I, it was two or three quotes, but those two items that we didn't need. Right. But I, I did say we need to sell the machine. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Other questions? Mr. Mayor, Joe yes. St. Columbia, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, 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 amending ordinance number 14, uh, $31,627.75. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. St. Columbia. There's a motion on the floor. Um, Second. Excuse, excuse me, uh, Procedure Mayor. 
Yeah, so I was just like going to ask that question. You, you thought about it. You're thinking you're, right. yeah, go ahead. Is your motion to suspend the rules and uh, place it on the third and final read, reading the title on the Mr. St. Columbia? Absolutely, yes, sir. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. And Ms. Ford, is your second uh, in agreement with that? It, it is, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and it's basically a cleanup ordinance. It looks like a brand new ordinance, but that was kind of my question, but, uh, but either way, I think it works, so. Uh, does everybody understand the motion? Any other questions or comments? If not, call the roll. Davis? Yes. Is that Columbia? Yes. Franklin? Etherly? Yes. Forward? Yes. Franklin? Four yes, two absent. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'm still not to a place where my computer is. Can you read the, the title of the ordinance, please? Yes. It's ordinance number 16. This ordinance amends ordinance number 14, an ordinance waiving competitive bidding in accordance with Arkansas Code annotated section 1458-303 authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract to purchase an asphalt hot box for the city of Helena, West Helena, and for other related purposes. There now needs to be a motion to adopt. So is there a motion for adoption of ordinance number 16? Mr. St. you may adopt final adoption of ordinance number 16. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Ford seconds the motion. Any, other, any questions or comments about the motion? If not, call her up. Etherly? Yes. Ford? Yes. Davis? Yes. Franklin? St. Columbia? Yes. Franklin? Four yes. Motion passes. Now, is there an emergency clause? I think there is. So we need a motion for the emergency yes. clause. I move uh, for the emergency clause. I shall move. Mr. St. Columbia moves adoption of the emergency clause to ordinance number 16. Is there a second? Second. A second. Ms. Ford seconds the motion for adoption of the emergency clause to ordinance number 16. Any other questions? Any questions or comments? If not call well. Franklin Davis. Yes. Etherly. Yes. Ford. Yes. St. Columbia. Yes. Franklin. Four. Yes. Motion passes. Um, so we have adoption of uh, ordinance number 16. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clean up, basically a clean up language so we can get our books corrected. Um, the next item on the agenda is ordinance number 17, the way bidding for the purchase of an articulating dump truck for the landfill. Um, we've kind of approached this issue before. We never really uh, finished it, the discussion. And I don't believe, I'm not sure if we had the ordinance ready, maybe we did and we didn't have a quorum, I don't remember now. But at any rate, uh, we need to uh, discuss this. So what it is, and um, uh, Mr. Jones, stay on, on here with me. Um, we have an old dump truck, just to, to sum it up, we have an old dump truck at the landfill. Um, they're, they're able to keep it going. Uh, it's slow, it breaks down some. Uh, going back to what I said earlier, especially uh, with the closure of the landfill, of the, of the cell four, I'm sorry, and then we've, reop or we've opened the new cell. Um, again, um, asked Mr. Fields if he would um, also look into it. And this is something we've been looking into. And I went out there myself and looked at it. Um, I, I guess my recommendation would be that um, that we that we consider approving this. Um, 
if we don't have an active dump truck, we have to shut down the landfill. If we shut down the landfill, we can't take customers. If we don't take customers, we don't make money. Um, we have a dump truck on lease that's cost us, Mr. Jones, how much is it? And Mr. Turner has been costing us about how much? Uh, Four or $5,000 a week? Is that right? right. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. That's correct. Um, yeah. And essentially, you know, we, we can buy one for what we've leased it for. Um, the bigger question is, do we need one permanently? And uh, the answer that I've received of people smarter than me, I guess, is, uh, is, that, is that we do. We need it. First, to close that cell. Um, secondly, to get our landfill in uh, full compliance with state laws and federal laws and regulations. And also in doing so, uh, to have, to have uh, I guess, that assurance or reassurance that if the other truck does finally go down, we have one already and we don't have to close the landfill while we go through this. I, I will tell you that I hope this doesn't continue, but, um, and it's been reported all over that since the pandemic, it's been incredibly difficult, particularly with implements, um, but everything, cars, um, our sky cops right now are waiting on uh, computer chips. So er everything is behind and everything takes longer and costs more. And with inflation, the cost of these things, and because of the, um, shortage of them, um, the, the prices of these things go up rapidly. Um, so for all of those reasons, the recommendation by, by the team on this is that we go forward with this purchase. But I want to ask Mr. Jones if he wants to add to that or at least be available for questions. I move that we uh, buy the new dump truck. Okay. Got a motion on the floor. Mr. Franklin moves adopt, um, that we put ordinance number 17 uh, on third and final reading uh, to purchase the dump truck. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Mr. St. Columbia seconds the motion. Um, it's uh, an ordinance waiving competitive bidding in accordance with Arkansas Code Annotated Section 1458-303, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract to purchase property for the city of Helena West Helena and for other related purposes. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I have this. Uh, I have this right here. If there's any other equipment that the landfill needs, instead of bringing these piecemeal back, let's get everything that, that everybody needs. So we can, when the next financial statement come out, we can have a, a clear financial statement on how the city will be operating in the next few months. I would like to see that uh, brought because I, if, if we spend it five thousand dollars a week on rental, then that's a problem. It should have been brought to. I mean, well, whatever. But I would like to see if there's any equipment needed at the landfill that makes this city money. Let's find out what it is. Let's get it done so we won't lose our landfill. Yes, sir. Um, any other, and, and, um, and let me say that, that that is going on right now, uh, or has been going on, and some discussions are going on with um, USDA Rural Development about uh, trying to help us uh, with some of those, some of those needs, not just at the landfill, but, uh, but for the whole city. I know one thing, um, well, there are a lot of things that really the landfill needs. Um, so I hope we'll be talking about in, in the near future. So. Other questions or comments? If not, call it up. Davis? Yes. Forward? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Five yes, one absent. Um, so the next um, ordinance number 17 for final approval. 
valid option to purchase the dump so, truck. So move. Uh, if Ms. Franklin moves adoption. Final adoption <laughs> ordinance number 17. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. St. Clement seconds the motion. Any questions or comments about the motion? If not, call roll. St. Columbia? Yes. Davis? Forward? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Davis? Four yes, two absent. Nice, it passes. Um, the next time would be the uh, adoption of the emergency clause for ordinance number 17. So moved. Mr. Franklin moves adoption of ordinance number 17. Uh, emergency clause for ordinance number 17. Is there a second? Second. Mr. St. Clinton seconds the motion. Any questions or comments about the motion? George Wilson. If not, call the roll. Franklin? Yes. Davis? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes. Forward? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Five yes, one absent. Motion, motion carries. Thank, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is, is uh, equally important. Um, again, Mr. Jones, I hope you stay on here for this one. Um, it's probably also widely reported the difficulty that uh, everyone has had in finding employees. Um, we've had a very big difficulty in filling CDL positions. Um, and I will let you know, Mr. Jones wants to, he can address that, but we, we've had a, we just had a real void uh, and, and we do, uh, uh, we do widely circulate these advertisements for CDL positions. Um, and uh, we come up with bricks and we have to have CDL, dri CDL drivers. Natalia. To pick up our, our garbage for um, for any number of things, our supervisors have, um, uh, including Mr. Jones, our director, have CDLs, and they've had to fill in. Uh, not that they don't already, because they do. They already drive these trucks, and uh, uh, but they've had to do really double duty because we don't have the CDLs. How many do we have, Mr. Jones, right now? Besides uh, besides me, Mr. Romack, and Wilbur, uh, just right. two. Um, yeah, just two and, drafts. And um, in talking to uh, and Mr. Jones and, and other people, uh, CDL drivers that I know, um, one of the, re I mean, basically, if you have CDL and you're willing to be on the road all the time, you can make a lot of money. Yes. Um, if you're, if you want to make it, have a regional route where you're back home at the end of the day with your family, and then you have to be willing to make less money, but you don't have to be on the road all the time. Yeah. Um, so when you look at that competitive rate for those drivers, CDL drivers, um, Mr. Jones and others have recommended that we adapt, that we change the base pay to the starting salary of $17 an hour. Mr. Jones, you want to add to that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in the past, usually a, 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 a new driver getting out of school, starting st salary for that driver will probably be about $45,000, $50,000. We're in dire needs of a driver. I mean, we went from probably seven CDL drivers now to two. And you got truckers right here now trying to pay new drivers eighty dollars to $70,000 to get on board with them. That's how, that's how bad it is for people trying to get CDL drivers. And with this $15, it's just not getting. I'm hoping that at that $17 scale, we can get somebody in here. So we've been advertising now just about a whole year and still haven't been able to get a CDL driver. So I'm, I'm asking if we can increase it from $15 to $17. Maybe that would help. 
any any questions or comments about that? This is this is just my opinion. Uh, a couple when we asked you all that about six months ago, when we gave a couple yeah. dollars to get this. Uh, I, I think everybody said, they said that would be a a good start. Well, I figure like this: the treasurer just asked for some more money, and uh, you all have uh, other deputy deputy directors that need to be adjusted. So I figure like this, I did check the finances because we have been doing a lot lately and the paper will say the city is on a spending spree. They won't say why we doing it, but the newspaper company will say, they won't, they won't put, put your pitch in the paper, Mr. they'll put your pitch in the paper, Mr. Jones, or they won't put other folks pitch in the paper about the increases. Now I wish that you all would come up with an agreement, get all this stuff together talk to the treasurer. The treasurer just asked for some money. Now the CDL drivers, you got other folks, what, you, what we need to do. And I don't, I hate to put y'all, but we need to have a budget workshop because we have spent a lot. I'm not trying to push nobody out, but I think we need to schedule this for the, the second meeting in July. Not to put y'all, but we need to get a clear statement on where we are. Because we have, we've gave, I, I, I've been a, a part of giving these raises. I don't have a problem with giving anybody anything. But I, at this point, we need to check the record to see where we are. I understand you need some drivers. I understand if, if we got some adjustments to do, then let's do it. But let's check the finances. Ms. Ramsey, uh, Mr. Turner, uh, can y'all try to get together and schedule us a budget workshop so we can see what our finances are? If we have to do one quicker than two weeks, then if we have to do one quicker than what I stated earlier, let's do one for next week or whatever we can do. But right now, we've given out a lot of money and we need to know where we are. When these checks start hitting the bank, we don't want to say we can't afford it. We don't want to have to take nothing back. So I think we need to, at this point, have a budget workshop. If your people can hold on uh, until we can have a workshop to see what can the city stand because I, I've been a part of giving raises. People need raises. Uh, and I think we need to try to find a way for the city to collect some more revenue so we can keep giving raises. But at this point, we need to check our finance and check our pocketbook and see what we got. I'm not saying no. I would like to sit out and have a meeting to check our pocketbook to see what we got. So we won't have to say we got to take some, something back. So if, that's, if the body would just work with me, uh, Jones, I know you won't. Uh, your people to have it, but if this, let us see what we have. If your department has, has the money, get with Mr. Turner and Ms. Ramsey. Let's show what we can give it, and if you, if you can sustain that, let's go. So we well, can I ask out. this question? Uh, Ms. Ramsey and, and Mr. Turner, do we have that money? I mean, would it hurt that out street, uh, street and sanitation budget for driving? I mean, these, these people paying for the garbage to be picked up. We Mr. bring Jones, in money. Mr. Jones, I, I understand I under, where you're coming I understand, from. Mr. I understand it, Mr. Jones, but but think about this. We just bought a hot we just we, we just bought a hot box. We bought some attachments. I understand people are paying for their trash. And, and then we're gonna have another question in a minute. Can we buy some new garbage trucks? And we bought three garbage trucks, so we're gonna have that discussion later. So I think it's only fair that we can have a budget workshop next week, tomorrow if you want to. But we need to check and check our finances. Well, oh, we I, I agree with you. I have no problem with well, that. That's well, fine. Then, I, then, I agree. Then let, Cause see, I don't. Want, do you want to give your folks the money and then next we've got to take it back? No, no, I agree with you. I mean, I don't so, worry the whole year. You know, you but know. Uh, 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 Mrs. Jo yeah, Mrs. Jones, so, remember? I can wait a couple more weeks. Mrs. Jones, well, let me. We, if I could, if I could interject something uh, right there, I'm going to say this is one example of. Uh, why Mr. Turner is very valuable to us. Uh, we check with him, or I check with him uh, on at least a weekly basis uh, on all of our financials. And, uh, and also look at the source material myself. I know where we are financially. We're in a very good place financially. Um, and the question is, we raised our sanitation fees on our citizens. Um, with the rain, uh, with the other things y'all already know about, it's, it's already a struggle to keep up with, um, with basically what used to be two cities. And if you don't have CDL drivers on these trucks, you can't, you can't 
you can't put them in behind the wheel. Um, that exposes us to a ton of liability uh, losses if we do. And we've been there before. So it's actually more expensive than um, and more, more, more liability exposure uh, if we don't do this than if we do. So sometimes these are investments and you need a return on that investment. Um, the taxpayers want to see a return on investment on the sanitation fee that was raised. I don't blame them. Um, and if we don't have CDL drivers to do it, we had one of our deputy directors out sick um, and, it, and that got us behind and our, our citizens weren't happy. And many of them pointed out that we, uh, we raised the sanitation fee. Yep. So as far as whether we can pay it, we can ask Mr. Turner right now. I would also can say I, I would also say that you could yeah. make we have talked many times about the CDL with, since I've been mayor. And from right we can tell right now our opening page 13, our beginning starting page 1313. 13. That's not even close. Um, 15 would be a good starting place, 17 with experience. If we really want to get serious about having enough drivers to keep up with garbage collections and and uh, and roadside uh, collections and all the rest of that. Um, and I, Ms. Turner, though, that's a fair question, Ms. Turner. But, but can we can we afford that? Well, well, can I say this before Mr. Turner answer that? That's all I gotta say. If you say if you if you say that the CDL's drivers need seventeen dollars, is that what you're saying? I would recommend seventeen dollar okay. base pay okay. because we're okay. having a very difficult time. Uh, uh, hold, hold, on. hold on, I just need a yes or no. Yeah. So, because we because up in the, up in the seat, yes, that, okay. yes, and, that's and, my recommendation. Uh, okay, so so wait, I got enough. I got two more for you. You said Mr. Turn. That's why Mr. Turner should have his raise, right? I think he's. I think he's worth everything. And oh, okay. More than what we so, get. so so okay. And, well, I, so hold, and hold, I don't think I can. No, I don't think I know. I okay. know we it, wouldn't it, be in the Mayor, position it, we are today it, it, if I didn't have Mr. Turner to work with. Uh, I can. That's the answer to your question. Okay. So, so you have to look at the value of somebody, not just not just what you're paying them, but what the return on investment that I, person and, and, is. And I understand it. And I can guarantee you, we wouldn't be in the financial position we are today if I hadn't had Mr. Turner to work with. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And okay. I'd like the last to have the floor. Hold on. I'd like to have the floor. I got a question. I got a question. So, Mr. Mayor, you saying so now? This is what I'm trying to do. If you saying the, the the treasurer, right? What about your deputy directors, the ones that are not getting paid the fifty thousand dollars? Mr. Jones, you just said that one of the one of them were out sick, right? You paying one deputy director fifty? Don't mm -hmm. you think we ought to so we can get all this done tonight? If Mr. Turner and Ms. Ramsey, so we can afford well, all. Well, this. let's 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 do it then. Hold on, wait, Mr. Hold on, Mr. Jones. Hold I mean, on, Mr. Jones. Do that, Mr. Let's do it then. If hold the on, okay hold, with. hold on, Mr. Jones. Hold on, hold yes, on. I got this. Okay. Just hold on. I'm trying to. I got this. So if everybody can, if, if this, if we can afford all this, is what you say. Now notice, you're you're the CEO of this city. You're saying that we can afford all this. My motion would be this: pay Mr. Turner the sixty. Pay the CDL drivers the 17, pay the deputy, the two deputy directors the 50, and that's my motion. Let's move. If this is what you said we can afford, notice now, Miss Sandy had this in the record. The mayor said we can afford this, right? Am I right, Mayor? Am I right? There's two part answer. I never said that. However, I would support that motion. Yes. Well, well, what the 90 day probationary. So, I mean, but I got to know, is that your motion? Did you just I just said that was my motion. I just said that was, since you can support right. There's it, a motion on the motion. Would you, would you restate your motion? Mr. My Turner. motion is the city treasurer asks for 60, the two deputy directors give them 50, give the uh, CDL drivers the $17. Only if the mayor says we can afford it and the city clerk and the, tre and the treasurer says we can afford it, Let's give it because I don't want to. I don't want to stop nobody. I don't want nobody to say that you gave the CDL drive and didn't give me. So let's give everybody what they want. Can I say something? My, my response to you, Mr. Flack, would be that the, the that the and this is my response. My response is that the city council is responsible for the financial management of the city. 
I give you a monthly financial statement. Uh, the city council can look at the financial statement and if you decide after, after your review of the uh, financial statement that we can afford it, then, 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 then that's your decision. I'm not gonna make that decision for you. That's me. I don't know what the mayor's gonna do. I'm not gonna make a decision for the city council. I just made a request. I give you- well, Mayor, I, 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 we do have, we do have a motion on the floor. So let me just ask, first of all, is there a second? And then we'll go we'll go quickly and recognize everybody's questions or comments. But is there a second to the motion? All right, some more time. Is there a second to Mr. Franklin's motion? Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, this is Joe St. Columbia. May I have a floor? I think he's dropped off the meeting. He's having connectivity issues. Sound like we were having problems here. Mr. St. Columbia, go ahead. Uh, the mayor dropped off. Go ahead with your statement. Okay, if I might have the floor for just a second. I, my son works with the college. In fact, he's head of that department. Uh, that you see those big trucks down there in, uh, in Midland Heights. Uh, and they test and tra train CDL drivers. Uh, those jobs are valid and they're uh, direly wanted. There are opportunities for uh, jobs uh, for CDL drivers. I don't think $17 is enough. I, I'll be honest with you. When I was in the beer business, I paid more than that to have a CDL driver and uh, to have a good one. And they took care of my equipment and all. I think uh, uh, Mr. Jones is asking for a meager amount for $17. I think it ought to be 20 to $22 an hour for that job, driving those trucks like that. And if we don't have them to pick up the garbage after we've raised the garbage rates in this community, uh, I, <laughs> I'm afraid our citizens of this community is not gonna like that. That job is important. It's uh, most important, handling our city equipment. And I think 17 is a, a very small amount to ask for. It's 15 now, and I think we need to go to 17 or if not $20 if we can afford it. Uh, so that's my, thinking on the matter, because I know what those jobs uh, are worth and they're bidded on. And we, uh, I, I admire the people that will stay with us for uh, for 15. That, that's remarkable. But they can get a job tomorrow uh, uh, making a lot, lot more money. Uh, yes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. If I may have a point of clarity, you all have been discussing this back and forth, but the clarity is the current rates that are set were those that were requested by the uh, Public Works Department. Um, the last time that the council approved it, because the, the minutes will reflect that they said that was the rate that the, that would that would be supported. Um, the issue is that that they were incorrect about that, and now they're asking for addition. But for clarity, the council didn't fight the last. Uh, the council didn't fight the, the last amount and that and we're not going against it uh but at this point the, the question is whether they want to prove it from 15 up to 17 because last time y'all went 13 14 15 to bit on experience uh mr john my question for clarity is are you saying a, a scale like you did last time or last time you had a scale of 13 14 15 
uh, could you could you be uh, clear as to what exactly is your request? Uh, well, it's $30. Well, Seventeen dollars starting out at the door, Mr. Valley. I understand, but it's the last time you made the request. You said you had a a, a graduated scale, of 13, uh, yes, 14, sir. 15, depending on experience. I'm yes, just sir. asking, Glad, are you saying something similar to that now? Uh, because while you're discussing it, uh, let's make it clear so everybody be on the same page. Okay, I I'm asking to start all drivers, CDL drivers, off with seventeen dollars starting pay. That's not enough. Oh, I know are, it's not. You know, let me get what I. Are you still asking for a graduated scale? Of some asking, like like you did last time with with not with right certain. Now. Not right now. I'm asking that the starting pay be seventeen dollars. Just starting out, not like I did with the thirteen with one year experience, fourteen with two years experience. I mean, we're in dire needs of driver. I'm asking starting pay is seventeen dollars starting out. If I go did. along with that. If I understand the current base pay, thirteen dollars and thirteen cents for starting out, and with yes, experience, sir. it's a scale up to fifty. All yes, I was sir. asking for clarity is: Are you saying seventeen starting out and a scale for his experience? That's what I'm just trying to make sure that that we well, have clarity for. Well, if you want to put it that way, then with experience, let's put it at twenty dollars. You know, you come in there with 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 at least five, three to five years experience. Let's go with twenty dollars. I think you're right start, there. But the starting pay is, you know, I'm, I'm requesting is $17, you know, starting out. But if you got one to three, I mean, three to five years experience, we we, we, we can go with $20. All I mean, like I said, it's hard to get CDL driver. It's hard. <laughs> we got the, we got the Hell and West Elm School District. Don't know what they're going to do next, I mean, this year. They got Three CDL drivers, when they didn't have probably 10 to 12 drivers, three drivers to start the school district off with in August. You take companies like Walmart or High, start them out at sixty and seventy thousand dollars Yes. Yes. Now, Mr. Jones, a uh, uh, point of clarity. I was speaking about operators, not CDL drivers, but my thought was that if you're going to do it, you probably also look at experience as well. Because a CDL driver with zero experience uh, probably shouldn't be getting paid the same thing for them with great experience. But that's the issue for the council. I just wanted to clarify for comments. I mean, I, I, I yield to anyone else. Probably, like, like I said, if they got, I mean, let's just do this. If they got five years experience. Let's start, I mean, let's, the starting pay is $17 coming in. Uh, if they got five years experience, let's go with twenty dollars. If we can do it that way, I want to change that base pay from what uh, from that coming in the door at thirteen dollars, fourteen dollars to seventeen dollars. And if they got five years experience, experience, we'll hit them with twenty. And that, like I said, I agree with you. That's be for the CDL drivers. Equipment yes. operators don't have to have CDL license. You'd be more apt to get uh, people to work for you with that kind of money. Yes. But you guys are just doing my, myself. I, I, I'm jumping in a garbage truck. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, sometimes to fill in. That's. I mean, if I'm not in a garbage truck, I'm in the boom truck. So it's just not the sanitation department. It's the street, both departments, street department, street and sanitation. Will there be a rate increase after the 90-day probationary period? If so, what would it be? And then uh, tell me your pros and cons against a sign-on bonus. A sign-on bonus? I mean, if we can do that, uh, like most uh, companies do, they do like uh, tw from $1,000 to $2,500 sign-on bonus. I mean, that would be up to y'all if y'all want to do it that way, you know. I wouldn't go there on that. No. But I think we you'd all take it. You'd be getting in it by, you'd be getting new drivers. I mean, I agree with you. We, like I say, we start off with CDL drivers, $17, and the experienced driver got five years' experience. Let's give them 20. That's right. 
you'd keep your people too. The second part of that question was after the 90 day probationary period. What, that, that'd, what, be, that'd be about the six month probation period. It, I mean, it depends on how they work out. You know, I, I can come back. That'll be up left up to the body. If we want to give them a little raise after that, that would be left up to y'all. But I would recommend if we did a couple of dollars, dollars so, a couple of dollars, depends on their work performance, attendance record and all. You know, based it on evaluation. What do we need? So, you what saying after six, six months instead of nine, 90 days, right? You saying after six months? No, it's six month probation period. Okay. I thought it was 90 days. No matter. I need to. Mal, uh, I mean that's where it always been with probation period. No, ain't been ninety days. Been six months. One hundred eighty days. We have never had a six, I mean, a 90 day probation period. Mr. Valley? Yes, sir. I, I, I think Mr. Jones referred to the base pay for site one of you and Ms. Okay. Mrs. Davis. Uh, the base pay is, 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 is 180 days, six months. Yes. What do we need to do to move forward on this request? Well, I, I didn't prepare a base pay. I didn't. I wasn't aware of this this amount or this discussion. I don't know if Mr. Turner amended the base pay. Mr. Turner, did you amend the base pay? Yes, I amended it to. I changed it to seventeen. I thought they told you that we were when we were up here Saturday. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that's the only thing I changed was it was the CDL to seventeen. Right. Well, Ms. St. Columbia, if you're for the CDL being 17, I don't think you have to do it to a motion to suspend the rules, place on third and final reading, and uh, uh, read the title only. I so, it, move. I so move to do that. That's for 17. That's to start them out with. Right. That's the Ms. Turner says the only thing in the base pay. I didn't see the base pay in my packet, but the only thing in the base pay would be the, uh, the change to $17. Yeah, it's highlighted. Okay. Okay, I'll make the motion. Reading title only. Mr. Valley? Yes, Ms. Rams. The motion that was made by Mr. Franklin had three other raises in there. Is this included in your motion? No, I don't think it's in this base pay at the $17. It's the only one what Sun Columbia is doing. Okay, gotcha. The other fell for lack of a second. Gotcha. Okay. That's correct. So I got a motion on the floor. <laughs> Mr. Ethley, you want to conduct a meeting since the mayor is not present? I, I think I see the mayor. I'm oh, sorry. There he is. I'm sorry. Uh, my computer lost internet for some reason. Okay, okay. there's a motion on the floor, I believe, to suspend the rules to put um, to move adoption of the revised base pay ordinance regarding $17 an hour for CDL drivers. Is there a second? Is there a second? Can't hear. Somebody say it. Somebody say it. One more time because my hearing's not that great apparently. Um, is there a second to the motion to adopt $17 an hour for CDL drivers? Okay. Hearing no second, Mr. St. Columbia, the motion fails. Okay. Lack of a second. 
let me uh, throw in a comment here because uh, there was a question asked about whether we could we could afford to do it, and the response that I heard from the mayor was I support it, but um, I'm not saying we can afford it. And the response that I heard from the treasurer was it's up to you to determine whether or not we can afford it by reviewing your financial documentation and then making an individual assessment or an assessment as a group. And so at this point, since nobody is saying and I'm not making that assessment on my on my own that we can do it. Nobody here is saying, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. I've made that assessment myself and I'll tell you or we'll advise you that you can do it. I can't go forward without doing that due diligence myself. And I merely state that to say that that's my individual position on this. That's not saying I'm opposed to any, uh, any request that anybody has made, but until I have done the homework, um, I'm not prepared to take action. That's fine. We can move on. I just do want to clarify that um, I was talking about the other motion when I said that, but um, I also said that we can't afford to not do this with CDL drivers because we need uh, good CDL drivers. We need drivers who aren't going to expose us, expose us to liability costs and among other things. And our citizens uh, ex expected, I believe, but um, but the motion died for lack of a second, so we'll move on. Um, and if there's no objection, I know it's getting late. Um, Y'all can look at these three resolutions, but I was with Mr. Valley still on, especially and wanted to move to the last action item, and then we can go back up if you want to. It's up to you. It's totally up to y'all. But um, if we could move to the Ion Wave Technologies Agreement, software dealing with bidding. Uh, it's uh, it's an agreement, but it looks suspiciously like a contract uh it doesn't it's not an annual renewal it's not it doesn't it's it can be ended at any time it's a about three thousand dollars if my memory serves me i'm not looking at it it's, i think it's in here maybe um a year what it does is create a bidding software platform for our website and a vendor platform so that vendors can be registered um, with the city to do business with the city. And they can also see the projects if they want to submit invoices, uh, even if it's not officially a bid process. But if there is an official bid process, uh, then they can do that. And they'll, they'll also, the project that we submit will then participate in something called Arkansas Bid, which is a bidding platform statewide that lots of vendors subscribe to so that they can bid on projects. So it exposes more vendors on particularly bigger projects. And um, and it, it arguably would keep us from having to suspend the rules to waive bidding on some things, but that's what it does. Mr. Valley, you want to add to that? Oh, uh, yes, uh, man, this, this contract, uh... If you if you follow to its to its through its length, uh, the, the five years it, it covers uh, more than the mayor spending limit. Uh, it, it is a contract, uh, as the mayor uh, properly said, it is for the purpose of streamlining as well as creating uh, somewhat of an incubator of our bidding, uh, so that people can go and look and see what projects we have, and uh, the city can place it on the city's uh, website, and for more efficiency and, and where it would partially cure some of the issues that you all been having about last minute stuff and not knowing when we need this, need that. Uh, but the, the purpose of it was is to, uh, uh, for greater clarity uh, for the public as well as for the city council and the mayor and the administration knowing uh, having a central place where you have your bids and, and, and people can submit bids for projects and people can know what they are. One of the complaints that the mayor has been trying to address is simply uh, uh, people saying they, they don't have information about bids. Then the other thing too is it, it creates a, a, a level where we're looking at uh, people being licensed and bonded and et cetera. Uh, but uh, with that, I yield to the mayor. Uh, the only thing I would say, it doesn't lock us into four year or five year. It's, it's Correct, it doesn't lock us in to four year, I'm saying. If you spend is, it over the time period. Is, I'm sorry, there, there is an appropriation clause and it begins July the 1st um, if it's approved. 
If you look at the annual, though, it, I misspoke a little bit. It's forty-five hundred a year. Uh, it's twenty-two fifty for the remainder of this year. But I just want to clarify. That. Any questions or comments about that? I hope y'all can hear me. Okay, Mr. Valley, we need a motion to approve that. Is that right? Yes, sir. This is a most simple motion to approve it. To authorize you to sign it. So the question on the floor, I guess, is a motion to approve a contract with Island Wave Technologies um, yes. that will provide software at 4,500. 4,500 a year with no obligation to. Right. Uh, th this is one of those, this is one of those things that's made to, to fall squarely within the serial contract. Uh, actually, the 5,000 is less than 5,000 for the year, but up front, we know that it's $4,500 a year if, if the mayor so chooses. And so he would have the authority to sign it right now for for $4,500 and not have to consult you all about it to the extent that it's budgeted. Uh, but because it's 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 uh, over $5,000 in total, uh, if the mayor is satisfied with their, with their uh, services, then uh, that's the primary reason this is being presented to you. Because in and of itself, if just one year, he, he could sign this as long as it's budgeted and, and Mr. Turner could tell you whether it's been budgeted and appropriated. Right. What is it? It's forty five hundred. Uh, actually, for this fiscal year, it would be twenty. Excuse me. It's it's in it's in the material. And just Go ahead. twenty two thousand. It's be half of that, and I think there's a five hundred dollar training fee. I'm not sure if that's listed or that's not. Equipment I need twenty two twenty two fifty. Yeah, you said twenty two thousand. I think you meant twenty two hundred fifty dollars. Anyway, I'm sorry, it's 2250 for this fiscal year. So that's really the appropriation. And I'm, I'm going to say 2750 because I believe there's a $500 training fee that's not that I don't see in here. So I'm going to say 2750 for this fiscal year. And I guess if it's renewed at 4500 in the future, talking about what is it? Oh, it's Iron Wave technology software. So uh, what it is, is a software platform you add to our website so that vendors can register if, uh, with the city to be you know, qualified vendors with the city. You can also uh, post projects and bidding projects on, the web, on our website. At the same time, submit them to Arkansas Bid, which is a statewide bidding program that vendors from all over the country subscribe to so that they can bid on these projects. So it exposes us and we don't pay a fee to participate in that, but the software company does and we get that included. How much is it? Uh, 2750 this year and 4500 a year if it renews in the future. I mean, it's, it's 2750 in, in the budget for uh, software support. It's, I mean, it's enough to cover that. I'm really bringing it up because uh, Mr. Valley suggests it's a contract and it, and it is a, you know, well, you've got it in your packet. So I'd rather err on the side of that than and Mr. Valley's recommendation. And it's, it's under my spending limit, but it's, it looks like a, it's, as Ms. Helen says, it acts like a duck, quacks like a duck. So that's really what you're approving is the, the contract. Is that right, Mr. Valley? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the item on the floor. Any questions about it, comments? Okay, is there a motion to adopt? Or I'm sorry, is there a motion to approve the contract? Is that, that's what's needed, right, Mr. Valley? With Island Wave. 
Yeah, did we lose a quorum? You, you did we Yeah, we still have a quorum. Yes, you still have a quorum. Yeah. Um, so is there a motion on the forward to approve a contract with Ironway regarding bidding software? Okay, no motion uh, moving forward. So the resolutions that came before that were multiple resolutions. They're not absolutely required, I don't think, in some cases, but um, feel free to comment on them. One, uh, uh, Mr. Valley, I'll leave this up to you. Uh, do you like, I mean, as far as what we need to do on it, um, I've been told two or three different things, but uh, just like we did for for uh, for New Year's Day, New Year's weekend, I wanted to designate like the city has done in the past, the Helena River Park as a designated fireworks area with the fire department uh, in the lead and also the police department supporting um, that area for public safety purposes, but it would allow citizens to go down there to you know, participate in fire, you know, to, to play or to use their fireworks. Last year, um, you know, we, we definitely did our best to enforce the ordinance against fireworks in the city limits. The reason that exists, it's a fire hazard. It causes a lot of disturbances for older people, particularly um, but, but a lot of people, and not to mention pets and animals, um, but mainly it's a fire fire hazard. So in the past, I understand it's been designated at the River Park, um, and that was the solution that was recommended because then the police can give a warning and say, but you can go down to the River Park. It gives them a place to safely do it. Anyway, the resolution was to support that. Yes, you, you, you're historically correct. So I guess, Mr. Valley, really my question is, I mean, I prefer a resolution regardless, but. Um, I think last time the city council voted to, to, to authorize you to do it. Uh, yeah, they did January 1st, but what happened is it rained anyway, and nobody went down there. So this would be the first time we've done it since I've been mayor anyway, that, well, we did it, like I said, but nobody went because of the rain. Uh, it, last year, July the 4th, as you all know, is a much bigger issue when it comes to fireworks. We were gonna try to um, test it, I guess, but, uh, but I think it's a good idea. It wasn't my idea, I think it's a good idea. Do I need a resolution in order for the city to do it? Yeah, uh, you, uh, yes, sir, to do it. Their vote, both vote the same as a resolution, but yes, to, to do it, uh, you need some authority because your ordinance specifically prohibits it. And they're suspending, they're technically suspending the ordinance for to authorize. So I'll open that up now. I know everybody's getting tired. Any questions or comments about that resolution for July the 4th? Anybody want to make a motion to adopt the resolution for July the 4th? So I'll move to adopt resolution number, it looks like, but uh, is it a 909-2021? Ms. Ford moves adoption resolution number 9-2021 on fireworks in the city limits. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Davis seconds the motion. Any other questions or, or comments? If not, call the roll. Davis? Yes. Thank Columbia. Franklin. Etherly. Yes. Forward. Yes. Thank Columbia. Franklin. Smith. Yes. Thank you. All right, well, we're, I know we're all getting tired and it's 8.30.
I'll, Not I'll quit. You have items on the agenda, so I'm just going to open it up and see what y'all yeah. want to do. Not to try your face, but uh, the president did, did the, I don't know if he signed the bill or not, but I know yeah. the, both, both houses approved it. Uh, our our uh, policy and procedure manual does not include Juneteenth as a holiday. Uh, I think that uh, the mayor is doing executive order. Out of buns of caution, I think that that if 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 you all agree with it, uh, that you should go ahead and and, and uh, approve that as a holiday in, in our policy manual, so it be treated like any other holiday. Uh, but that's just. Uh, food for that's it's not necessary tonight, but uh, it would have to be done by ordinance. But uh, I was just trying to put that out there so you can have to think about that as well. I can't hurt if somebody wants to make a motion and second it, we can vote on it. So, what are you asking for a motion to uh, give the uh, city attorney uh, as the well, to ask the city? Attorney, to prepare an ordinance or to vote tonight without an ordinance. Well, let let, let, let me let me make clear. What I'm asking you to do, let me, what I'm asking the city council to do, if you so choose, to adopt Juneteenth as a city holiday, and be treated as every other holiday in our personnel in our pilot the personnel handbook, and then I will bring an ordinance back for adoption next month. But uh, next, what the next city council meeting, but the, the holiday occurs this this Friday. I just wanted to make sure the spending was appropriate before the holiday occurs. Holiday occurs tomorrow. Okay, so moved. Ms. Ford moves adoption of, of resolution, right? Yes. To make Juneteenth a, a recognized holiday in our employee manual. Is there a second? Yes, Ms. Ms. Davis seconded already. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Ms. Davis second the motion. Any other questions or comments? If not, call the roll. Thank Columbia. Forward. Yes. Etherly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Franklin. Smith. Yes. Thank you all. That, therefore, it should be treated, the mayor should treat it like every other holiday and his, his uh, proclamation would be in accordance with every other holiday. Thank you. I guess I'll just quickly address the other two resolutions. Again, it's getting light. So we're, we'll, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm open for suggestions, but uh, one we don't have to do tonight, but it's um, USDA Rural Development Grant Loan Program. I kind of alluded to this earlier that we're putting together for needed equipment um, for the city. And um, it's, it's just a resolution, resolution seven. It's something that's included in the grant loan um, application process. So the other one is to ask the Helen West Town Planning Commission to resume their meetings um, and request, uh, consider requests regarding uh, signings, I think it was supposed to be, and street designations related to the Conway Twitty proposal and other matters. Um, again, we don't actually have to do that tonight. Uh, it's resolution number eight. And then we have a lot of discussion items. So what would y'all like to do going forward? Uh, let's go ahead and take care of the seven and eight, isn't it? Uh, yes, ma'am. SDA grant and the uh, um, Eight is for the planning commission. I move that we adopt these two resolutions, seven and eight, tonight. Ms. Ms. Ford Thank moves adoption of resolutions number seven regarding USDA Rural Development Grant Loan application for uh, my ask you seven and eight. And uh, well, I was getting there. And resolution eight regarding the Helen West Central Planning Commission. Um, <coughs> the, is there a second? Monica. Ms. Davis, out, yeah. Ms. Davis seconded. Uh, any other questions or, or comments? If not, call the roll. At Columbia, Franklin, Davis. Yes. Forward. Yes. Italy. 
Yes. Smith? Yes. Four yes. Okay, thank you uh, very much. And that uh, is helpful, particularly on the, uh, the grant loan application. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm gonna open up for the rest of the agenda discussion items. Uh, again, we'll move forward um, as you wish. So I'm just I'm just bringing that up because it's getting late. And I know it's a long agenda. Or you can just pick and choose. I mean, it's, I'll just open it for discussion. How about that? <laughs> And y'all, whoever wants to discuss something, can. Man, yeah, we're going to split up the store now. Okay. Got to get uh, your lunch here. I got one question before we end. Okay, Mr. Jones. Uh, can we table that, y'all, about this, this pay raise for the CDL driver to the next council meeting? Mr. Mr. Don, y'all, the rest of y'all, Mayor. Uh, I think it's already tabled, Mr. Jones. I don't think they voted on it. How about we just move it, uh, put it on the agenda for the next meeting? Same thing. And, and Mayor, I, I would ask, uh, uh, could we have something uh, for the wage increase that we have uh, a concise request uh, that would include step um, okay. increases based on experience and licensure? Yes, ma'am. That, that that's all fine. And is is there anything that we have that we need absolutely need to address this evening? We can table the rest of the agenda to, until the next meeting, as far as I'm concerned. I'm just opening it up for discussion. So anybody anybody wants anybody object to that? Okay. okay. Um, if there's no objection, Mr. Everly, we'll, we'll go ahead and move the rest of these items to the next uh, agenda for the next meeting. Is there an objection? If not, we'll do that. Okay, well, it has been a long meeting. Uh, thank you uh, for all of you in the next. Uh, well, I'm sorry, do we have a quorum? I know we need to adopt some minutes. Do we want to move that too? Yeah, let's, let's move it. Okay. All right. Well, there's no objection. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Thank you, motion. All right. Thank y'all very much. There's no objection. Adjourn. Thank you.